In just one moment, the world received three shockingly different previews of its robotic future. China unveiled a combat humanoid straight out of a Terminator film. Medea deployed a six-armed industrial robot built to replace entire workflows, and Beeple sent billionaire-faced robot dogs wandering around Art Basel, taking photos and pooping NFTs. So, let's talk about it. On December 24th, a strange, electrifying moment rippled across X. It started with a single video from a Chinese robotics company most people outside the industry had never heard of. The company was called Engine AI, and the machine in their 42-second clip was the T-800, a humanoid combat robot standing 1.85 meters tall, weighing as much as a fit adult, and moving with a level of confidence and balance that made people genuinely uncomfortable. And the weirdest part was that nothing in the footage looked hesitant or experimental. The robot walked with clean, controlled steps, pivoted sharply, delivered high kicks with force that looked almost human, and recovered from the motion without a wobble. It looked like something Hollywood would spend millions of dollars animating, except this wasn't a scene from a movie. At least, that's what Engine AI claimed. Naturally, most people dismissed it immediately. CGI, propaganda, a stunt, a deep fake, take your pick. Social feeds swarmed with mockery, breakdowns and frame-by-frame -frame exposés, trying to prove it couldn't possibly be real. But then, Engine AI did something no one expected. The very next day, they uploaded the behind-the-scenes footage. Full studio lighting, camera rigging, technicians standing beside the robot as it performed every move exactly as shown in the original clip. No green screens, no mocap actors, no visual corrections. And yet, even with proof right in front of them, some people kept hunting for mistakes, insisting it still had to be CGI. So the CEO stepped in, literally. It was the ultimate 75 kilogram face-off. The Engine AI T-800 humanoid versus its own boss, CEO Zhao Tongyang. One swift kick was all it took to send the CEO straight to the mat. The clip went instantly viral and you had to wonder whether there was a tiny bit of personal score settling unintentionally programmed into that move. Suddenly the robotics community, which had laughed along with everyone else, went quiet. The question shifted from, is this fake, to how did they actually build this? The fact that this needed to be proven with a physical demonstration says everything about how far humanoid robotics has come. When CGI becomes indistinguishable from reality, trust becomes the bottleneck, not capability. Because the punchline was just starting. The T-800 wasn't a flashy concept video. Engine AI confirmed the robot was going into field trials. They confirmed the retail price, 180,000 RMB, around $25,000. And they confirmed the most surprising detail of all. The T-800 was the first full-scale humanoid robot to ship with a solid-state battery. That alone pushed the machine into a completely different category. And the hardware reads like something designed for a future battlefield. The T-800 had 41 degrees of freedom, aviation-grade aluminum armor, and joint actuators capable of delivering 450 newton meters of torque, enough force to shove a grown adult backward without effort. Each joint could output up to 14 kilowatts of instantaneous peak power. That's why the robot could pull off flying kicks, acrobatic leg sweeps, and rapid weight shifts without collapsing or drifting off balance. And the perception system was equally aggressive. A 360-degree LiDAR array, stereo vision, and onboard processing fast enough to adjust its trajectory in milliseconds. Inside the torso, an Intel compute unit paired with an NVIDIA AGX Aurin delivered 275 tops of AI capability. For context, that level of compute is normally deployed in autonomous vehicles, not humanoid fighters. What made the moment even more interesting was that this wasn't Engine AI's first improbable stunt. Months earlier, they released footage of their PM01 humanoid performing a clean front flip. People dismissed that one too, until videos emerged of the same robot 
walking casually through Shenzhen, navigating curbs and sidewalks without assistance. No wires, no CGI, just raw hardware. And this time, the environment wasn't controlled at all. Cars, pedestrians, uneven pavement, unexpected movement, everything handled without hesitation. For many engineers, that outdoor footage was even more impressive than the T-800's flashy kicks. And the truth is that China's robotics industry has been accelerating at a pace even Silicon Valley wasn't prepared for. Over the past two years, universities, defense labs and private startups have poured resources into humanoid design, manufacturing and mobility research. The goal is clear, develop a general purpose humanoid platform capable of replacing human labor in logistics, inspection, disaster response and eventually defense operations. So the T-800 isn't an outlier, it's the latest sign of a rapidly forming ecosystem. This isn't a single company pushing boundaries, it's an entire nation building momentum. But for all the spectacle, one problem remains. Hardware is no longer the bottleneck. China is producing powerful actuators, dense batteries, refined mechanical frames, and cost-efficient manufacturing pipelines. The missing piece, the one that separates flashy demos from practical deployment, is the software stack. Control systems, simulation tools, APIs, developer kits. Engine AI hasn't shown any of that yet. They talk about secondary development, but without a robust SDK or accessible programming environment, the T-800 is essentially a very athletic, remote-controlled machine. If they solve the software side, everything changes. Even so, dismissing the T-800 would be a mistake. Because the hardware alone reveals something deeper, China now has the ability to mass-produce humanoid robots at prices no one else can match. And once software catches up, the global robotics landscape will shift fast. The conversation won't be who can build the best robot, but who can build millions of them. And while all of this was exploding online, another robotics milestone was quietly unfolding, and it was much more shocking. Maidea, one of China's largest industrial manufacturers, unveiled a six-armed humanoid robot designed for high-complexity multi-step factory work. The robot is an upgraded version of Miro, the wheeled humanoid deployed earlier at the company's Jingzhou factory in Hubei. But this new version triples its capability. With six synchronized arms, it can grip, rotate, assemble, inspect, and reposition components without handing them off to anything or anyone else. It is, in the most literal sense, a self-contained workstation. And it's not entering a lab environment, it's entering a fully operational smart factory. Inside Midia's Jingzhou plant, humanoid robots work alongside AMRs, four-wheel single-arm machines, KUKA industrial arms, and human workers. Every agent, whether walking or wheeled, is connected to a centralized intelligence system called MBOT. This factory brain assigns tasks, coordinates traffic, balances workloads, and keeps production running with a level of precision that would be impossible with humans alone. There are no pauses, no miscommunications, no wasted motion, just a continuous dance of machines moving in sync. The footage Medea released showed the robots working in a joyful, almost comedic tone, but the underlying message wasn't lighthearted at all. Factories with this level of automation aren't the future. They exist now, they're scaling. And with the arrival of the six-arm Miro, the complexity of automated workflows is about to jump again. Entire sections of assembly lines could be consolidated into a single machine with six coordinated limbs. And while China pushes combat robots and factory humanoids into real-world deployments, in the US, something very different was happening. In Miami. Inside Art Basel, one of the world's most prestigious art fairs, people walked into a brightly lit space and saw six robot dogs pacing around a boxing ring arena. Each dog wore a hyper-realistic mask. Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Picasso, Andy Warhol, Beeple himself. 
the installation was called Regular Animals. Visitors weren't prepared for what happened next. The dogs stomped around, raising and lowering their silicone billionaire heads, scanning the crowd with glowing camera lenses. Then, one of them suddenly crouched. The screen on its back lit up with the words, Poop Mode. A moment later, a printed photo slid out of the robot's rear. That photo wasn't random. The dogs constantly captured images of the space, ranked them and used AI to reinterpret the best one in the style of the face they wore. Musk's robot printed stark black and white schematic sketches. Zuckerberg's resembled metaverse concept art. Picasso's fractured the scene into cubism. Warhol's blasted it with neon color. Bezos's looked clinical and futuristic. Some prints were NFTs, others came stamped with deadpan certificates declaring, this artwork has been tested and verified as 100% pure GMO-free organic dog, originating from a medium adult dog anus. It looked absurd, but Beeple had a point. Musk and Zuckerberg already shape how billions perceive reality through their platforms. They don't need political permission to change the digital world. They just adjust the algorithm. And these robot dogs turn that invisible influence into a physical spectacle. Powerful figures reimagining the world and then quite literally pooping out their version of it for people to consume. There was no physical barrier. Visitors shared space with the robots. Some photos included QR codes that let people claim free NFTs, blurring the line between physical presence and digital ownership. And by the time the show opened, all six robot dogs had been sold to collectors for $100,000 each. So on one side, China is pouring its energy into combat humanoids and industrial robots that can fight, work and operate at scale. And in the US, we're celebrating robots that parody our tech billionaires. Both are reflections of what each culture values. But which path actually shapes the world our children will inherit? I'd love to hear your view. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI and tech breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI.